Liverpool, everybody's saying we'll take a drop. We're going to do them. We're going to win. We're going to win. This is the one. Don't be afraid of Anfield. We're going to win. City, treble, treble. Tonight, City continue their defence of the Champions League. It took a long time for them to win the Champions League, I suppose. But for those who've been around for a while like me, it's 44 years since City won their first European trophy. A lot of people won't realise that. If you don't believe me, listen to this guy's story. What it is, my mum's from Vienna, a little village outside Vienna in Austria. And in 1970, City got to the European Cup Winners' Cup final. And my dad had his, uh, he had a, his own little business running in Hyde. And he had a pickup, a yellow pickup, Mazda pickup van wagon and he sold it to fund the trip to get to Vienna and he stayed at one of my aunties in Vienna uh, there was only about eight or nine thousand there and City won the cup that night 2-1 it was a brilliant game he said he come back home three or four days later flew back home with his friend and said to my mum uh, my mum said where's the wagon gone the pickup and he said oh it's in the garage being repaired but four weeks later he had to tell her that he'd sold it so we could get to Vienna to watch watch City win the cup. So that that's where City's European adventures began, I feel. And obviously there was a time when Malcolm Allison would say we're going to terrorise Europe. Yeah, and then Galatasaray put us out the next day, the next year in the Euro European Cup, didn't they? It didn't happen. But look at how we are today. We're champions of Europe. We've won all five trophies last year. It's just great to be a blue. And is it tonight going to be a comfortable one? It looks I, I, like it, I think it? so. I think he might rest a couple tonight. Uh, maybe play Alvarez and a couple of the younger kids, Oscar Bob and that. And uh, I think we'll win 2 2 0. See, I told you, <laughs> City have been in this European adventure for a long time. Now, just before I talk to some of the fans who were here at the ground tonight, uh, last night I went along to um, a special place, and I suppose there are other City fans who got places like this, a sort of shed little office in the garden, whatever you want to call it, with City fans included, some who travel from further afield, to tell me their story. Uh, you may have met uh, Mrs Bernard Halford Karen by watching the vlog at the weekend, but here she is again now in that special person cave, shall we call it that, dedicated to all things Manchester City and her late but loved husband. So, Karen, this is quite a, a shrine, is it? Is it a shrine to Bernard? It is, and it will be because there's so much more to go up yet. Gary's had and Sue's had this newly built, so only half of the memorabilia is up, and we've got loads more to go up and look through. But as you can see, there's there's the plaque you've just taken, and there's his cap, and he would have absolutely loved this bar. In fact, I don't think we'd have got him out of here. But it's actually your brother's bar, really, isn't it? It is, it's Gary's bar. Yeah. Hi Ian, you okay? Yeah, tell me why you're inspired to do this. I, I suppose there'll be other fans around the world who will have bars like this, won't they? Oh yeah, there is, yeah. I mean, we had so many good times uh, with the other bar and we thought we'd put a bit more money into it because we enjoy it so much. And with the team doing so well as it is, it's, uh, you know, I don't think we've lost a game in here yet. Well, we're obviously here on a football night yeah. and you've got people who've come from... Yeah, far afield, yeah, from Malta and our friends, yeah. Been friends for 40 odd years and... Um, Big City fans, which is great. It is and, a football uh, family, isn't it? I mean, a lot of people yeah. who are members of official supporters clubs actually watch my vlogs. I know that, and I'm very appreciative. And I suppose Malta is just another one of those many, many branches that we have now. Oh, it is, yeah. I mean, um, they had the Cactus Bar that was quite well known over there. Uh, a lot of Liverpool and Man United fans, unfortunately. But uh, I think the tide is turning, as you say, and... Uh, and hopefully, you know, we can uh, get the Blues up in Malta a bit, you know, the numbers up a bit more. Well, I'm uh, an old uh, friend of uh, Karen and Bernard, God give him heaven. Um, and since 40 odd years, we've been uh, like supporting City, obviously, because um, it was like in their blood, you know, supporting City, with especially Karen. And uh, we used to exchange, like when they came to Malta, they stayed in my place, I stayed at this. And I've been following City ever since, you know, it's, uh, you know, Malta's known for 
a lot of Man United supporters and Liverpool supporters, but the numbers now are growing fast. You know, it's uh, that we're doing very well. I mean, I'm trying to do my best to increase the uh, the supporters. You know, official supporters, get them to sign and be members and come to see more football matches, and that that, that uh, thing is growing quite fast, in my opinion. Thank goodness. Well, Mr. City are playing Copenhagen this week. Are the European games more interesting to you than the league games, or are they all pretty much the same? No, for, for us, watching City, I was discussing this with uh, Gary, actually. If you start to watch City, then the other teams seem so low in their uh, standard, you know, because if you watch City playing, the only team that come close, not as much, but it come close to the way City plays, are Arsenal because of Arteta, obviously, you know. The others are way, way behind the way we play, you know, it's incredible. So I'm not watching football anymore, except when City are playing. And whether it's European or domestic, we don't, uh, it doesn't matter as long as City are playing. It's like an enjoy, enjoyable evening to watch, you know. It's good football that even if we lose, it's still good football. And I still think that Guardiola is a genius. Do, do they know in Malta that City haven't always been like this? Of course they do. <laughs> As I say, we've been well, friends I... 40 odd years. So, <laughs> I mean, the last, I don't know, is it 10, 12 years? We've, we've come into our own and we can celebrate and we can be the noisy neighbours for a change. So, um, and we are doing, we're loving it. I've flown home from Spain, I now live in Spain, for the derby to meet up with Laylee and his brother and friend and celebrate his 70th birthday as well. So um, we had a nice uh, seats in the box and the hospitality and had a nice day together. So it was fantastic. So yeah, I, I think we're doing amazing. I know Bernard's watching us. I absolutely know is that there was two Robins in the garden. I said, oh, it's my mother and Bernard. So, and this was before the Derby game. I said, no problem now, we'll win. And uh, looking forward to Copenhagen tomorrow night. And Copenhagen, of course, is going to be another win, isn't it? Of course, yeah, easy, easy. And you've got, oh, you, you two are from uh, Malta as well, are you? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. We yeah. are new members, really. New members. <coughs> new yeah. members. Glory really. hunters. Glory. Are, <laughs> are you glory hunters? Just come because City are winning. Oh, yes, since I've been uh, a new member, I might say two years, I saw City winning, really, four or five times. And we came from over Malta to see them. We pay, uh, we pay a good money, but really it's worth it. I can say this is my membership card as a new member. And even my, uh, my friend here, he's a Hello. new member as well. Most probably he, I always carry this with me. This one I carry and the visa card. So uh, that, that's guarantee me that whatever city will play, I'm on. I'm after that. Well, listen, you're welcome to the City family. Enjoy your experience. You're in good hands. May the party continue, eh? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Thank you. A uh, European night means for me, obviously, coming down with James, more often than not. And um, basically, it's we have a ritual. Cause it's, you can see this one, the last time was on the vlog. Um, we've got our ritual. We'll get Well, we started getting the tr train and tram, and then we'll be off for hot dog and chips, and then... The, um, basically, we have to we try and stick to the same routine, and I know you've discussed that in the past, and that, that's a big thing for us. And James has just come up from Birmingham today, so he's going back tomorrow to uni. But um, it's just you, European night is exciting. Another diff, a different uh, country team that we've not seen. We're just talking about not on the way in because we've seen about five German teams on European nights, and I'm uh, just looking forward to hopefully a City win. If I'd have asked you this question, or City fans, this question two years ago yep. everybody would have said Premier League but if yep. you had to choose between this season Ooh, the yep. Premier League or the Champions League which way would you go? I think to shut all the, uh, the, the fans of all around the country because we always used to rub it in and even Forrest do it that we've only won one but it'd have to be Champions League for me. What about Difficult. you? That's a tough one isn't it no one's won four on the bounce but then do you, do you take another Champions League and then potentially Liverpool or Arsenal winning it and it depends because obviously both fans you know you don't want to win so I think 
it'd be nice obviously winning two Champions Leagues on the bounce but I think I just think from a domestic point of view obviously winning four Premier Leagues and not having Arsenal fans or even worse Liverpool fans you know saying they've won another Premier League I think it's got to be Premier League, but as much as obviously I'd like to win two Champions Leagues on the bounce, I think domestically, I think bragging rights are more important. Than... Did you go to Istanbul? No. Wouldn't you like to see him win at Wembley then? You would do, but I think I, you can't be too greedy, can you? But you know, because I think you've seen, I've seen tons of, tons of comparisons of obviously Pep season in 2010, 2011. You know, um, obviously beating United 3-1. The um, obviously it was an English fight, it was a Champions League final at Wembley. Obviously, his, his Barcelona team faced Copenhagen in the round of 16. So there's a lot of there's a lot of um, I would say coincidences occurring in the Champions League this season. So I think obviously both obviously from we're looking to say obviously we would like to win both, but I think you've got to be happy with either, aren't you? I've had the chance of having either. So um, but yeah, <laughs> you, you, you won't say no to any, would you? <laughs> Champions League final at Wembley. Be yeah, right, I, think, I think James makes a fantastic point um, in the fact that. Four on the bounce, that's history again, isn't it? But, you know, I could be greedy and go for free again. We've got to have a treble again, Ian. So that'd be really nice. That'd be uh, sticking one up to all the, the rest of the country who think we're all uh, cheating. Yeah. So, uh, no, that'd be, that would be fantastic. And to win it at Wembley would be, would be absolutely icing on the cake. I think pretty much as, uh, as predicted, City are obviously superior and uh, probably only playing of 80-90% uh, and uh, once in a while if Copenhagen get, gets dangerous, okay, they just uh, turn up the heat a little bit, so uh, yeah, not, nothing much uh, surprising you there in the first half. You think City can win it again this year? Yeah, I think so, I think so. Obviously, yeah, for me, it's it's football and everything can happen, obviously, but, but it, they're definitely the top, top favourites. The, the squad they have, the depth in the squad is uh, amazing. The style of play, the, the players they have, Thank you. second to none for me. What do you say in Danish? Good luck to City. Yeah. Hilla <laughs> Lüge. Hilla Lüge. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. I hope they win. Um, I thought we showed great control first half. Put it to bed early. Second half, I thought we were a little bit sloppy after all the changes. I mean, the crowd was quite quiet tonight. A few people mentioned that to me, but I suppose when you threw you one up from the first leg, it's almost inevitable, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. They scored two goals so early. I think the crowd all kind of relaxed, and it was all a foregone conclusion then. What did you think? Basically, agree with everything. I think the crowd just gets very comfortable. I think we need to keep the energy up a little bit more. But, yeah. but obviously, it it's so good football. You just got to sit back and enjoy it. Exactly. You? What yeah. do you think now in the rest of the competition? And do you fancy City going all the way again? Yeah, I fancy the title this game. Yeah. Real Madrid tonight only drew one all with Leipzig and only gone through, but they're hardly convincing, are they? No, they're not looking the same this year. I've got a few fans who Madrid fans who live out there. And they've said they're not the same in the Champions League. So I'd rather the Champions League than Prem again this year. Does this put City in the right mood for Liverpool? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, big game at the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Thought it was just what we needed. Two early goals set the tone, and then conserve some energy for uh, for Sunday that's the big one isn't it I yeah. suppose the 3-1 first leg result was the key to this wasn't it it was it was except that and, but obviously there's always that danger early on that if it doesn't go our way concede early could be a bit tricky but it allowed us to rest a few players and fingers crossed everybody's fit for uh, for Sunday have you been telling your dad that you're going to Wembley in the uh, Champions League final yeah. <laughs> you see it could happen again couldn't it it could, it could, I'm keeping everything crossed. But I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a typical pessimistic City fan, I never expect it. I always, never expect the best, I always fear the worst. So what are you thinking out of Liverpool, man? I think we're going to have to be very disciplined. I think we're going to have to watch it at the back because we've been a bit open recently a few times. I think teams, when they get at us with long balls through over the top, a bit of pace, we're going to have to be very switched on. But if we play our game, we win. Easy enough, easy enough, happy with the win. Real Madrid struggles, so you know you can you can slip up a nice like this. Um, on to the next round, quarterfinals. Let's have it again. What's treble, your mood, treble. What's your mood ahead of Liverpool then? Liverpool. Everybody's saying we'll take a drop. We're going to do them. We're going to win. We're going to win. This is the one. Don't be afraid of Anfield. We're going to win. City. Treble, treble. Well, that was about as straightforward as it gets really for City, marching on to the quarterfinals of the Champions League, and this is where it starts to get 
very, very interesting. Uh, once again, thanks very much to uh, MotoringOffenseLawyers.com, who are, of course, Ken May Kenway Miller. So thanks for their support. And also to M&M Artwork and Mirrors. If you've got any memorabilia that you want to get framed, uh, contact them. Uh, they're the top uh, people, really, to do that. So thanks very much to M&M Artwork and Mirrors. And, of course, to, uh, to Timson for their constant support of the vlogging that I do. I'll be at Anfield on Sunday. That one's gonna be interesting. Come and see me if you see me down there, if you're going to the game. If not, give us a watch after the match, see what fans thought before and after the game. And as ever, um, it's come on City, because you know what? It's always great to be a blue.